These are shy, nocturnal animals. You know, they come out at night. These animals don't use the venom in catching prey. They only use the venom in defense. They have to chew to start to release the venom. Now, they've got a, a really great grip. When something like this happens, you ask, have to ask yourself, how much venom? Uh, was the person immunocompromised? How big is the person? How big is the victim compared to the amount of venom that's injected? How toxic is this venom? Earlier this year, a tragic incident occurred in Colorado involving a man and his illegal pet Gila monster, marking the first fatality from a Gila monster bite in nearly a century. I've only seen one in a private home in Colorado in 41 years of practice, and that was one that was seized at a crack house by the Denver Police Department. The victim, 34-year-old Christopher Ward from Lakewood, was bitten by his pet Gila monster named Winston. Nobody really explains what happened. I'm sure it was just a, an accident, you know. He's probably just cleaning the cage or, you know, maintaining the animal and probably got bit by mistake. And unfortunately, it's the way he responded to it. Despite the immediate and severe effects, Ward delayed seeking medical attention for two hours after the bite. Upon finally reaching the hospital, he was already fading in and out of consciousness. And over the next four days, he suffered several seizures and ultimately passed away. About this bite, why it's become so newsworthy is that, and for this to have developed into a crisis so rapidly, um, suggests that probably that person was very sensitive to foreign proteins. When something like this happens, you ask, have to ask yourself, how much venom? Uh, was the person immunocompromised? How big is the person? How big is the victim compared to the amount of venom that's injected? How toxic is this venom? But he also may have had a, a lot of venom delivered. The Colorado Department of Natural Resources subsequently transferred Winston and another Gila monster named Potato to a wildlife center in South Dakota. Gila monsters, scientifically known as Heloderma suspectum, are native to the southwestern United States, particularly Arizona and northwestern Mexico, rarely found in other states like New Mexico. These lizards thrive in desert and semi-arid regions. Spending most of their time underground, they are the largest lizards in the United States, growing up to 2 feet or 60 centimeters in length and weighing around 3.5 pounds or 1.6 kilograms. Named by Edward Drinker Cope, a prominent figure in paleontology, Gila monsters belong to the ancient family Halodomatidae, which dates back to the Cretaceous period. This family's lineage suggests that Gila monsters have been around since the time of dinosaurs, potentially preying on dinosaur eggs. These lizards are easily recognized by their distinctive beaded appearance, resulting from osteoderms, which are bony deposits in their skin. Their colors range from yellow to pink, bright orange and black, serving as a possomatic coloration to warn predators of their venomous nature. The name Heloderma translates to studded skin, reflecting their tough, armor-like scales that feel almost like living rock, providing substantial protection from predators. Gila monsters are one of only to known venomous lizard species, the other being the Mexican beaded lizard, Heloderma horridum. Unlike snakes, which inject venom through hollow fangs, Gila monsters have venom glands in their lower jaw. They deliver venom by biting, latching on and chewing, allowing venom to flow through grooves in their teeth into the wound. When they bite, they have very strong jaw-closing muscles, so they can hold on like a little bulldog. Their venom, while as potent as rattlesnake venom, is produced in much smaller quantities and is primarily used for self-defense rather than hunting. These animals don't use the venom in catching prey. They only use the venom in defense. They have to chew to start to release the venom. Now, they've got a, a really great grip. The venom causes severe pain, nausea, vomiting, sweating, and a significant drop in blood pressure, but is rarely fatal if treated promptly. Very, very potent effect on blood pressure, and it causes blood pressure to crash really, really quickly. The venom is not intended to kill prey, as the slow-moving creatures Gila monsters hunt do not require envenomation. Gila monsters are generally reclusive and prefer to avoid human interaction. They are primarily diurnal, but may become nocturnal during hot weather. 
These are shy, nocturnal animals. You know, they come out at night. Their diet consists mainly of eggs from ground nesting birds and juvenile rodents, which they locate using their excellent sense of smell. Their forked tongue helps detect scent molecules, allowing them to find eggs buried up to six inches underground. Interestingly, Gila monsters can follow the scent trail of an egg rolled along the ground, demonstrating their keen olfactory abilities. They hunt with powerful jaws that grip prey firmly, and their bites are difficult to escape due to their strong, vice-like grip. The breeding season for Gila monsters occurs in the spring, with females laying to 12 eggs in burrows. The eggs hatch after about four months, and the young are independent from birth. Despite their fearsome reputation, Gila monsters are not aggressive and will only bite if provoked or mishandled. It's hard for me to, you know, get too loose on here because even though he's being very calm, I don't really want to give him any latitude. This isn't something you would get out and play with or this isn't something that, um, you know, you would put on your lap or, or... These are venomous reptiles, can we trust them? No, they're really neat, neat animals, but to be respected, for sure, you know. You can get venom from them by getting them very agitated, and so I just assume you not be agitated. Their venom, although painful, is usually not fatal unless the victim has underlying health conditions, such as compromised liver function, which impairs the body's ability to process toxins. Gila monsters are currently listed as near-threatened on the IUCN Red List, primarily due to habitat loss, and illegal collection. There's a huge black market trade in, in, in reptiles, endangered species, animals that people shouldn't have, animals that shouldn't be collected. They are protected by law in many areas within their range, making it illegal to capture or harm them in states like Arizona. Despite the danger posed by their bites, many experts consider Gila monsters to be among the most fascinating reptiles. Their venom has been studied for medical applications, leading to developments such as the diabetes medication exenatide, derived from a compound in their venom. Gila monsters are well adapted to survive in harsh desert environments, using their fat storing tails and efficient metabolism to endure long periods without food or water. With the ability to maintain a steady pace over long distances, these remarkable creatures demonstrate impressive stamina compared to other lizards. Their unique evolutionary traits and ancient lineage underscore their ecological importance and evolutionary success.